Uh, another thing you can do, you know, why don't we build an add-on module? Can we build a daughter board that we just, you know, we have this cool blinky LED thing, but we don't like the little embedded epoxy dot? Maybe we can just take our little uh, mini Arduino or, you know, AT Tiny chip or whatever we want and solder that on top of it or make a little board that we just hot glue in there and run some little 30-gauge wires and connect it all up to the same stuff. Uh, we might be able to do things like have it you know, wait for the power signal to turn on and immediately turn it off because it's some security feature that we don't want that is preventing us from enjoying our device. We can do lots of stuff there. Tons and tons of stuff we can do with microcontrollers and logic that we add ourselves. Uh, we want to replace a module that's in there with our own. A real common one, maybe, uh, like this is, this is a radio, a little Chinese-made ham radio. I want it to be a beacon for balloon traffic. So I made this little device. It just keys it on and off. I figure out how to get the cable. I figure out what it took to turn it on and off and where the audio went in. And the thing will generate its own and it'll send my call sign and it'll, it'll turn on and off. Uh, if I made that smaller and surface mount, I could probably stick it inside the case and say if I can buy a hundred dollar beacon. Uh, another thing you might be able to do, maybe you have a device that only works in America and has a GPS on it, write a little fake GPS device. Just sends a dumb serial signal, fits in the same footprint, and it'll work always. Yeah. Same things that cell extenders are classic, right? That, that's a good example of that. Uh, I mean, a lot of devices also have unused components, so they made the board able to accept some more expensive parts, maybe for more filtering or accept different voltages or peripherals they decided not to market. Maybe the upmarket $200 version of your $100 device with the USB, all it's missing is the USB connector. I kind of like that one. You know, look that up, find a USB card that a connector will fit, stick it on there. Uh, another thing, just figure out what's talking and, and tap into it. Make your own thing talk to it. Uh, all of the uh, Linux NCE, the home automation stuff, uh, that's what they've done, is they basically use logic analyzers and software and sniff what comes in and out of all these home uh, security and automation devices, and they just reverse engineer the protocol which just says, turn me on or off. Uh, really good tip, start with ground. Anytime you're trying to figure out what comes out of cable, you know, ground is going to be connected to the case and oftentimes the chassis ground for the power plug. That's one down, and then power is usually the next one. Then after that, you might chase it to a chip and find out that's a a serial chip, or it's got a pair of transistors that boosts this up to 50 volts so it can travel a really long way, and you can start figure out how to hook it up accordingly. Scopes, logic analyzers, frequency counters, the data sheets. The manufacturer might have had a guide for interfacing big microcontrollers for, to really long cables for security applications. You'd be surprised how much stuff's out there. Good chance the manufacturer just ripped that verbatim because they're lazy. There's lots of low end protocols for that stuff. Uh, I touched on this, but very low cost hardware often sucks. Uh, you know, they really remain, they're barely able to function as they are, and they may not tolerate a lot of hacking. Uh, older devices tend to be more robust, bigger parts, stuff that you can actually physically touch, and they tend to use like well documented parts, like you could buy at, you know, God forbid, Radio Shack, but uh, Newark or Bowser or, or DigiKey. So this is uh, her scramble pad. I like taking apart security electronics because I'm a hacker. But you notice this uses dumb off-the-shelf parts. This microcontroller on the upper right, that's a CPU you can still buy, you can get the data sheet. Uh, it has a ROM, which you can drop into an EEPROM programmer. It's a very common one that's also used in cars. So I might be able to figure out if there's any cookies in there. Uh, it's got big, easy to probe, and there's only two layers of logic. This board was laid out by hand. Uh, I've also got big relays, you know, like on the upper right corner there. Uh, if I wanted to just bypass this thing, I could probably cut the logic pins and stick my little, you know, microcontroller or Arduino device on there. Uh, this thing also has some, some signature things of old electronics. Those two giant heat sinks, those are for voltage regulators. Uh, unlike that chip you saw earlier, that's very efficient for dropping, you know, down to five volts and so forth. Uh, basically, the old ones had to burn all of this heat. That's a good indication that you're dealing with, this is a classic, uh, linear power supply circuit with that big cap. It's got some input fuses. I'll notice it also has a big battery for holding the settings. It's kind of an ugly thing. But, uh, you know, this is something that you can readily uh, jack into and work on if you want to. Whereas here's a more modern counterpart. That doesn't look as much fun, does it? It's got, this thing is actually hideously complicated for what it does. I think they could have done this with about half the logic. It's probably one of these things that they add on to over time and already had a bunch of certifications they didn't want to blow. 
fact, you'll notice, despite having all these tiny little surface mount parts, it's still got a giant heat sink and that dumb little power supply on the lower left-hand corner. So, I don't know. I think I would just scrap this and start over for me. Uh, another cool thing, uh, any of you guys musicians? Anyone like chip tunes, you know, modding keyboards? Anything that's old and analog, chances are will respond to a case swap, or rather a part swap. Uh, so you can swap resistors and caps and things like that. Uh, you can reprogram some stuff that's just changing resistance values, even things that are kind of sophisticated. Beeping, flashing toys, musical instruments. A lot of those have like RC oscillators, and you can just try swapping in parts, or you can solder another resistor or cap in parallel with it to see if you know the, the blink changes, the tones change, it shifts the whole thing down half an octave, whatever. Really easy to do. Uh, chances of blowing stuff up that way are also quite low. And you're also going to have, uh, you know, a lot of different places. You can just take like moisten your your thumb and press it on a part that is a low voltage circuit. You might hear the pitch change or something happen. It gives you a good clue that it's going to respond to resistance or capacitance change. And those power supplies, you know, are a good place to to hack with resistors. Uh, I like to have a book of resistors through hole and surface mount just for stuff like that. Surface mount's really easy to piggyback another part on top too, which is cool. So. A lot of these talks. Oh, it's good. That might be it on its battery. Oh, no, wait. How that? Yeah. All right, maybe we're good for another 10 minutes. Who knows? So, a lot of the talks you see at these cons are all about very deep hardware or software reverse engineering, you know, going into disassembling hexes and hex files and, you know, getting the code out and, and hacking it. But realize even a software mod, you know, something that requires, you know, okay, the special software you download and you know, the USB cable can trick the bootloader into loading the special software and all that, they probably start as a hardware mod. In order to get there, somebody had to maybe solder on some probe wires, uh, replace uh, a solder on chip with a socket so that they could then you know, reprogram it, put it in, reprogram it over and over until they got it right. Uh, those things don't just appear out of thin air. And you know, another common one, making a, just a special interface cable, figuring out how, uh, you know, what the connector is, what all the signals are, and then maybe you find out there's a, a cable you throw to ground and it goes into debug mode, or you know, there's lots of stuff like that that happens. Even these hardcore hardware mods that have to start off with simple, you know, simple hardware fixes. Uh, one thing, you will almost certainly break your device if you mess with it at some point. So I recommend not doing this with something that is irreplaceable. Really consider buying two, or maybe you know a, a semi, you know, a beater or parts unit on eBay. Do a whole teardown on that before you risk your good device. And forms and mailing lists are a really good resource for all this stuff. You know, lots of stuff on teardown, on you know, just basic programming and strategy for the chips that are on it, things like that. Okay, legal issues. This is something we hate, right? In the United States, we're saddled with a big piece of crap called the DMCA. So how does this, this is you know, theory designed to prevent you know, software and game piracy and stuff like that, movies. In reality, it also puts a big damper on stuff we can do publicly. So in theory, there's an exemption for circumventing protection and copyright you know, and code control mechanisms for achieving interoperability with your inter independently created products like loading Linux uh, drivers for an unknown video card or whatever. In reality, this is used to bully and shut down people who do things like make aftermarket inkjet cartridges and stuff like that. Uh, so you really want to be careful what you document and share with your hardware hacking. Could be considered circumvention. Sharing it is even considered trafficking, which is kind of stupid. Uh, the bottom line of that, the more paranoid and tied to selling very expensive closed source hardware companies are, the more likely they are to just attack you civilly or criminally. So it doesn't mean don't do it, maybe don't talk about it. Maybe try to do it in a way that is not considered circumvention, like working around having to disassemble the encrypted ROM or, or something like that. And you can get advice from EFF and various resources for that. Bottom line though, you can be right and still get screwed. So you know, be careful about oversharing and be careful about how you go about stuff. Also, if you work for a company that has lots of NDAs in place, they may cover some of your activities. So you know, be forewarned. Uh, some of the stuff you might want to read up. Uh, Sam's Laser Fact is a really good site called repairfact.org. It's got lots of safety, teardown, repair stuff. 
Uh, Force Men's books, you can get them at Radio Shack on Amazon. Highly, highly recommend. Uh, look at those. They have tons and tons of basic primer and electronics info and lots of functional circuits that are already you know, known working. And you'll see these things deployed over and over, very basic versions of it. Same engineers write those before they go to school. Uh, and then there's a great book, uh, it's a free online download, Analog Secrets by Leslie Green. This has a lot of really, really good information about uh, how stuff is made for shielding and compliance and what they do with the grounds and why stuff is made the way it is. It's super awesome and it's free. Uh, there's a good wiki, uh, wikibooks.org has an electronic component ID book. The EEV blog, it's a great video book, uh, blog. It has lots of teardowns of brand new equipment, old equipment. Uh, Bunny Wang's Hacking the Xbox is also available for free now as a download. Uh, I highly recommend getting that. It's a little dated, but it's got some really good nuggets of information. And then uh, there are a couple of legal resources here. The EFF and Chilling FX have done some fairly good guides for reverse engineering. Uh, I've got to say the EFF has been more helpful in the past, but now that there have been like multiple court decisions that contradict each other. They seem to be a little more hesitant to recommend specific strategies. And uh, I'm going to put this up on my wiki as well, so you'll be able to download this. And my email's there. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Yo. Do you need any big gold Panasonic TVs? Oh uh, boy. Well, if you're coming to the shop party, you're welcome to bring one. We can tear it down. Okay. Is that a vacuum tube? That's good. No, you can get some Hello Kitty crackers. <laughs> oh no, projection TV suck. Unless you want big, scary, high voltage components, or you want to build like you want to build an X-ray machine, that's a good place to start. <laughs> uh, anybody else have that? Okay. In that case, it's time to give away a shake weight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't throw that, please. <laughs> no, that's not a bad idea. All right, so uh, let me think. Who has who has a good take apart story of a happy ending? <coughs> Anybody? Who's taken apart some things? Yeah, what do you got? Uh, expensive uh, clothes washer came yeah. from the house you bought. Brand name is called Fisher Table. Something bizarre. And yes. It's really expensive. It's a giant pulse width modulated motor that I can do that. I can hear my girlfriend goes on um, the laundry goes to spin cycle when I'm out my head shack. It, it, Last so much I Yeah. The thing would beep and shut off. Lame. Yeah, you would die. Like, oh crap, we don't have like 500 bucks for this. I noticed you pull the plug, plug it back in, you get a spark in the plug, but it might work another couple minutes. Well, huh? So, okay, current limit. Take the, open the thing up. It's got a big bank of caps, and it's got an inrush current limiter. Nowhere near rated to the appropriate amount of current limit. Resistance. Right. Uh, I overpaid at all electronics for about 30 cents, put another one in, for a for like, I don't know, 14 months. That's awesome. You know that current limiter is something you see, it's not obvious what it is, it'll have an amp radio on it. Uh, that's good. Um, that's near the beginning. One of your input circuits that you commonly see on consumer electronics is, uh, if you look at the lower right hand corner, that's where the AC cord comes in. Immediately right next to it, it's not a fuse, it's actually a current limiter. That's something to look out for, and those things totally go bad. You're absolutely right. It's a dumb thermal component. Next to it, you see that there's going to be a fuse and some other stuff. That's a righteous hack. That's good. Anybody else have, have something that's off top? I really, I don't want that weight. Someone yeah. <laughs> You're about to get a shake weight, so I mean, someone better step up. Uh, one thing I might add on those Fisher and Pekel washing machines. That motor in there is a giant, like 20 volt stepper motor. And that thing does that. And those are awesome for crazy robotic product, uh, projects, and you can put those magnets or those uh, holes in it in series and parallel and make really cool wind generators of any voltage you want. <laughs> Super cool. Uh, Don't take your wife's washing machine apart to make a robot. Yeah, not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, have, you have some good mechanicals and you make a righteous Sibian out of I'm guessing, too. <laughs> Uh, anybody else ever been had the bad capacitor playing? Had a motherboard uh, they they're really working by swapping some caps? I was working on an old uh, dirty ion compressor. I found out the hard way they actually uh, well, this is back in the seventies when they actually you know, screen printed yep. all the values on the PC board. Yep. So it's like, oh, okay, yeah, and part of the thing on it about thirty seconds later, I have to pass the flow. So it actually 
Yeah, you'll you know you find mistakes. Uh, if you ever fucked, seen a, a thin blue wire on a circuit board? That means somebody screwed up. That's probably not supposed to be at a vascular revision, or they had to swap something in the last minute after they already made the board. Yeah. All right. That might be. Uh, all right, whatever. I guess that's the execute. I think you get the shake weight, though. Congratulations.